Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. Today we are doing uh, part of our series of 24 Python libraries called Funky Python Libraries in 24 Days. Uh, today I'm doing a little library uh, which some people find very useful called Arrow. Arrow is, I believe it's from the joke, which is time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. Um, which which I it's one of my mother's favourite jokes, to be honest with you. Um, it's wonderful. Anyway, Arrow is one of those ones which is called Better Date Times for Python. Here's the uh, documentation. See? Very useful. Let's just go jump into using it. Um, so, uh, import Arrow. Um, uh, to be honest with you, one, I've never really had a problem with date times in any language. I think from a very young age I understood that time is completely fictional and all the rest of it. Anyway, some people have a problem and sometimes date times are a bit of a weird construct. Um, an arrow does actually simplify it. So if you do, and it also has some humanization functions as well, which is quite cool, uh, over what is in the standard Python date time library sort of thing. Anyway, you can kind of do like now equals arrow dot uh, UTC now, because we always want to work in UTC. By the way, if anyone wants to have a discussion about the differences between UTC and GMT, I'm always up for a good pint of beer to go over the detail because there is a difference and it matters. Um, it matters to me. And one of the things you can do is you can just you know print it off or do an arrow, arrow dot format um, and to get a nicer one or uh, now dot um, a timestamp to very quickly go to the Unix timestamp. So it's got some very nice built-in features, which is really nice. Uh, but one of the things you can do with this, which is really nice, is you can do now dot shift uh, hours minus one to equals sorry, equals minus one to go backwards an hour. Okay, whereas to do that in date time, be from uh, date time, import date time, which in itself is a little bit confusing, comma time delta. And then you would do now equals date time dot now, and you do uh, one, uh, one hour equals time delta dot hours, um, hours equals one. And then you do an hour ago would be now minus one. I guess you could have done that time minus time thing. But it's a bit weird that you have to know about this time delta object, which in itself is a very weird concept. Like, it doesn't really model the real world. You just want to say, I want to shift it two hours ago. Anyway, so you can then play around with this thing and get your timestamps back. Uh, what's really nice about this, I'm not going to run into that. Just make sure my now is actually still UTC function. Um, one of the things I like about this is you can down now now dot humanize like that, and it tells you what is here. So if I now shift it by an hour or um, then equals shift by an hour, I can do then dot humanize. Oh. It says an hour ago. If I say day equals two, run that. It's gone forward a day. It sort of works it out. Um, you can also do quite cool things here. I'm going to copy this one. Locale equals KO Korean. So we're going to do it in Korean. There you go, localize that in two days or in a day in Korean. Um, so yeah, it's time zone aware. It can be naive, naive or time zone aware. Uh, you can flexibly what time zone. Oh, one of the things you can do really nice in this, by the way, is you can actually do um, then dot um, two. Uh, let's say I want US dot Pacific, straight to the docs. It then gives me the, that time that I've calculated in Pacific time. So you can put in human things. And quite often these are selectable. There's like a standard set of times, uh, um, central and so on in there. And it comes out the nice time. So if you're working internationally or making a website international friendly, that's a really cool thing to do. What I like to do, I don't like leaving it in my state when I print it off. Um, uh, but it is very, very powerful. That's it. That's the entire library. It, it, it's a really nice library. Have a Check it out online. Check out the actual documentation for it. Um, you can do things like uh, converting times, humanizing it's really cool, so you can actually start saying, um, you know, it, it's at four o'clock, which is in an hour and six minutes or five minutes. You can also say exactly how granular you want that humanization to be, where you want it to be exactly right, or you do want to be a bit more vague, uh, depending on the situation you've got. You can also do dehumanize, which is quite fun. So you can say uh, de dehumanize uh, two days ago, um, which is nice. Um, which gives you a um, oh no I did that wrong it's from it's UTC now sorry I'll have to do now because you have to start 
from a thing. And that actually gives me a point. That was two days ago. There you go. Um, so it's got some really quite cool funky things. If you tie that in with some of the natural language, pro language processing we've got to be able to detect people saying times. You begin seeing that in, in like messages where it says, oh, let's talk in five minutes. You can go, bang, I know what time that means. I know I've got the timestamp the message was sent. I can know when five minutes would be. So it's really like, quite cool and be able to detect these kinds of things. If you look for these verbs to get all these nouns to come up, you can then try a, a, a number plus a noun plus a, a, an extra word you can help work out when that might be. Uh, so that's the library. Um, if you're enjoying these videos, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and you'll see there's 24 there, or there's probably only 11 of them because it's day 11. Uh, but the links are on the side. There's a playlist for these. Um, so yeah, please hit subscribe so you get the next one tomorrow. Um, and I will see you all then.